Alrighty, y'all, welcome back. And in this video, we are gonna be taking a deeper dive into transactions. So just to recap, a transaction is basically an instruction from an account requesting some kind of update to the state of the Ethereum network. Now, the most simple example would be a transaction requesting a transfer of Ether from one account to another. And in this example, the part of the network that would update is of course the account balance of this blue person and this green person right here. Now on that note, transactions can also be instructions to the network to execute smart contracts. Now an important point to make is that all transactions are always initiated by an EOA. In other words, by a human or an account with a private key. Contracts, however, once triggered, let me draw a little arrow here. So once they are initially kicked off by an EOA, they can indeed, let me find my little red dot here, they can call other contracts as part of their execution. So again, in the Ethereum network, contracts can indeed call other contracts, they just can't initiate the process. The process has to be initiated by an account with a private key. Now, another point to make is that all transactions on the Ethereum network, they are going to require a fee in order to be executed. And this is because it does require the nodes in the network to do some amount of work. And this work can be something like validating the transfer of Ether, checking people's account balance, or of course, executing a smart contract. So the nodes, since they do have to do some amount of work, it does require a fee to execute a transaction. All right, so now that we have a basic understanding of what a transaction is, what they're used for, let's go ahead and dive in even deeper and take a look at some of the fields that are included in these transactions. So the first thing that we're familiar with is the recipient of the transaction. Now, the recipient of a transaction can either be another EOA, which you can just think of as an individual, a human, or as we said, a smart contract. Now, whenever the recipient is another EOA, then what that means is that the transaction itself is simply a transfer of value from one account to another account. Now, when the recipient is a contract account, that transaction is gonna trigger the code in this contract to run or execute. Now, the value field in a transaction, you can probably guess this, this is just the amount of ether that you wanna to send to the recipient. And the recipient in this case can be both the EOA or a smart contract. Now moving on from that, we have this N-O-N-C-E pronounced nonce. So what is the nonce? A nonce is a unique number that is required for every single transaction. Now for EOAs, this number is the number of transactions sent from the account. Now for contract accounts, it's the number of contracts created by the account. Now, if you're wondering, what's the point of having this random value in there? It seems kind of uh, silly or nonsensical, hence the name nonce, but it's actually a pretty good reason. And that is a different value is needed for every transaction to essentially prevent the network from processing the same transactions over and over again, really as an attempt to get more fees. Now the signature field right here this is the digital signature that was generated from the private key that we talked about, I believe it was in the last video. And what this basically does is it allows the account owner to authorize the transaction. Now this data field right here, this is actually a pretty interesting one. We'll be getting into this a bit more later when we write our own smart contracts, but high level overview, this is an optional field used to include really um, any arbitrary data. Now it's used primarily whenever you're calling smart contracts because it can indicate which functions to run, which parameters to use, so on and so forth. Now you don't use it too much whenever you are making a transaction to another EOA. You can include data whenever you're making a transaction to an EOA. However, whenever you do so, it's really just ignored by the Ethereum protocol. So for now, just remember that this data field is gonna be used whenever we are sending transactions to smart contracts. Now these fields right here, gas limit, max priority fee per gas, max fee per gas, I did wanna include them in this tutorial since they are an important part of the transaction. However, I don't wanna to get too deep in the weeds because we are gonna have a separate tutorial 
covering each of these concepts in more detail later on, a dedicated gas tutorial. <laughs> it's going to be uh, pretty interesting. However, just to kind of uh, complete this tutorial and you know not leave any gaps in your mind, I will mention quickly a brief overview of what gas is. So gas is essentially the fee required to process a transaction and it's based on how much computational effort is required by the network. Now for simple transactions like a transfer of ether from one person to another, the fee isn't much. However, for complex smart contracts that require a lot of computational power, that gas fee is gonna be quite a bit. So for now, we can think of gas simply as a transaction fee. And even though that isn't 100% technically correct, later on we can dive into exactly how everything is calculated and we'll clear up any misconceptions there. But for right now, all we have to remember is that whenever users are going to send a transaction, that they are gonna have to pay a fee and that is basically the gas right here. And also, I will mention this gas limit since it, I guess it is related to this. Users are also gonna include a value for gas limit and this is just gonna indicate the maximum amount that they are willing to spend on a transaction. Now, before I let you guys go, I do wanna mention one other thing and that is in addition to creating a transaction and having the recipient be either an EOA or an existing smart contract, there is one other type of transaction. There are actually a couple different types, but uh, one other type that I wanna mention right now is a transaction for deploying brand new contracts to the network. Now, as a developer, whenever you wanna deploy a new smart contract, what you would do is you would actually create a transaction and have the recipient, it's called a zero address. It's basically addressed with all zeros. And again, this is not an EOA or a contract address. It's basically a special address, meaning uh, if I send it to this destination, it basically just means create this contract, uh, deploy it for the very first time on the network. So again, that's called a zero address and it's used whenever you're deploying contracts for the very first time. Now there is a few other things that we should cover related to transactions, but covering them now wouldn't make a lot of sense. We'll get into those a little bit later on, especially when we start getting our hands dirty, coding some Solidity contracts. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.